Hello there. In today's macro photography tutorial, we're taking a look at shooting some Star Wars scenes using Lego. So I'm going to uh, put some Lego scenes down, use some practical effects to make some really cool cinematic shots. So stick around and I'll get started. So yes, the Star Wars hype is pretty real at the moment. There's new games coming out, there's new TV shows, and there's the new film. So whether or not that film will live up to expectations, we'll have to wait and see. But I want to take advantage of that hype and get some inspiration from some Star Wars Lego toy photography. Uh, today we're going to be grabbing some minifigures and doing some portraiture using coloured lights, uh, lasers, fog, uh, all sorts of practical effects. My objective today is to not use any Photoshop at all, but come out with some really cool atmospheric images at the end. Now we actually did some Lego photography in a previous video, uh, but that was a very different style. We were shooting um, film noir style Lego, so we got uh, some of the buildings behind me, we got those down and used them as a scene to create some nice uh, dark and moody images, again using lasers as well, which we'll touch on in just a little while, but for a slightly different purpose. So today I'm going to be grabbing some Star Wars figures, I'm going to be getting much much closer than last time, um, I'll link that video up in the top corner if you want something a little bit wider out, uh, but I'm going to be using the Adapt Look Studio to create some really cool coloured effects, I'm going to be using atmosphere spray to create some, uh, some fog, and I'm going to be using lasers to light up some lightsabers. So I'm going to get started with my first shot, which is going to be of Boba Fett. So I'm going to uh, grab him out of Slave 1 and uh, get down close with the macro lens and see what we can do. So my first setup, my first shot today is going to be of uh, Boba Fett and Han Solo in Carbonite. We've got a little uh, Carbonite figure of Han Solo there and he's actually uh, uh, the little minifigure of Han Solo is uh, nicely asleep in here. I'm not sure if you can see the, his expression, but he's sleeping quite peacefully in his carbonite shell. Um, so that is going to form the background of our portrait of Boba Fett. Um, he's going to be sat quite proudly in front of his bounty of um, of Han Solo. So there's, uh, there's Boba Fett in his armor. Uh, and I've posed him just with a slight head tilt off to the left so I can put his body facing away from us and then looking towards the camera. Uh, I'm then going to place him just slightly in front of Han Solo um, and then we can talk about our lighting. So I'll just uh, I'll pop the camera on so you can see exactly how these guys are posed. So this is already pretty close to the shot that I'm wanting to achieve. I'll just focus in there now that we've moved the uh, the minifigures around and maybe just bring um, Han Solo a little bit forward. And you can see there that we're actually reflecting some orange light. Now that orange light is coming from the Adapter Look Studio. So here we've got uh, the control pod on a mini tripod um, and in the control pod, pod we've got plugged um, a white lighting arm S, so that's our brighter version of our normal white lighting arm. That's got a uh, white diffuser on there just to soften that light on their faces a little bit. And on the other side we have an amber lighting arm. Now I've not diffused that at all, that's just coming straight out, um, but it's positioned behind the two minifigures. So if I put this back in place, you can see that we've actually got some uh, some rim lighting coming in on the back of Boba Fett's helmet, which just helps to highlight um, that side of him, pick it out from the background a little bit because uh, that side of his head is quite dark. We've only got one key light, we've got the one uh, white light coming in from the one side, so that's lighting up one side of his face and picking out the detail, whereas the, uh, the orange, the amber light, is just adding a little bit of coloured effect. Uh, and that goes the same for Han Solo in the background there. I want him to be just a little bit out of focus because the focus here is on Boba Fett. He's the one that we're taking the portrait of. So I wanted to have most of the light on him and then just a little highlight of orange just to make it a little bit more uh, moody and interesting. 
Now there's one last thing to add to this scene, which I think will make it a little bit more atmospheric and a little bit more of an interesting shot and not just a shot of some Lego characters stood there. Uh, it'll make it a little bit more cinematic. Uh, now I've got my hands on some Atmosphere Aerosol, which um, which comes from uh, the guys at Atmosphere Aerosol. You can you can get these um, online for uh, I think this was about uh, ten pounds, um, and they ship all over the world as well. And it's designed specifically for photographers, so it's called a professional haze. It's really great for full size portraits if you want to add a little bit of atmosphere to that. Um, but it's essentially just a just an aerosol with some haze in it uh, and it sits in the air for uh, quite a while actually and it's really really handy for uh, stuff like uh, toy photography where we can just spray this down I'll make sure that we're recording just spray this down in front of our characters and you'll see that it's actually affecting that orange light coming from uh, the the right hand side of the frame it's making the lights uh, a little bit more hazy it's adding a little bit more atmosphere and that uh, cool cinematic effect that we want so uh, the one thing that you do need to make sure that you don't do with this stuff is to uh, go full blast and move your subjects. Uh, so make sure that you're nice and far away and that you're not blasting them too hard to either knock them over or move them out of position. It's also worth noting that if you're particularly precious about your minifigures, it does leave a little bit of uh, a wet residue on them. So it might be worth giving them a wipe after you've done some spraying of this aerosol. I'm going to uh, just fine tune this shot and then take my final image and move on to some new minifigures. For my next shot I wanted to, uh, well it seems that we're sticking with the villains a little bit. I've got um, an Emperor Palpatine minifigure here, um, he's an older model but he, uh, he checks out so um, yeah I'm going to be getting a nice little uh, portrait of him with a couple of his uh, Senate Guard or um, I'm not sure what they're actually called though, uh, the, these, these red dudes who linger around in the background of a lot of the uh, the shots in the movies. Um, I'm going to be uh, getting a really moody, dark and very, very evil shot uh, to suit uh, the Emperor's personality as it were. Um, the way I'm going to do that is by using a red light. So as I hit record on the camera, you'll see that we've got a nice red haze going on in the background. That's again from, well, it's actually just the leftovers of the atmosphere spray. Um, but if you uh, spray a little bit more, you'll see that it just adds a little bit more of that haze in there. Um, I'm going to experiment by letting that dissipate a little bit and seeing what it looks like absolutely clear of all of this haze that's now hanging around it in my room um, and see whether, I'm, whether or not I prefer it. Um, but for now, let's talk about the lighting that we've got going on here. So again, I've got a single key light which is coming down from the top, which is a white lighting arm S with a diffuser on the front. Um, I wanted to get that sort of classic look of the Emperor where his hood is actually shading uh, the top half of his face and making him look uh, quite sinister. Um, so to do that I've got the, the main light um, positioned directly above him and just a little bit in front so that the, uh, the light is actually casting a shadow across the lip of his hood. Um, and then in the background I've got a red lighting arm which uh, is, is not only enhancing the reds from those two characters in the background but it's also shining onto um, just a simple white card which is uh, becoming a, a nice reddish pinkish hue when the light falls on it so that's providing us a nice background. If you remove that background entirely um, what you're left with is just black background because uh, the, the characters are lit so brightly we're exposing for the characters and not the background and there's nothing in the background there's no lights over there so it's going to be dark so that's an option as well that's how we did uh, our Boba Fett shot just have nothing in the background expose only for your minifigures and light only your mini minifigures make sure that no light spills onto the background and you'll have a nice black background. For this one though I think uh, 
Uh, I'm actually preferring this, this red colour. I'll take both and decide later. I think so far we're managing to uh, get some pretty cool shots and we're not going to need to use any Photoshop at all so far. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to again just fine tune this shot, take my picture and uh, move on again to some new characters. So for the next shot I wanted to do something uh, from the prequel movies and uh, we've got General Grievous facing off against uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, the way that I want to do this is again not using any Photoshop and this is going to be tricky because we're introducing lightsabers here. I don't want to have to go into Photoshop and brighten up those lightsabers so that they look like they're glowing which is going to take, as you can see here, a much more elaborate lighting setup. Let me walk you through what we've got. I want to get a much closer view of our uh, protagonists here, or our antagonist as it were, and the, uh, the face on Grievous is quite nicely detailed, so I wanted to get really close to that. Next, I wanted to light his lightsaber. So I've got a green lighting arm coming down uh, on this side, which is not only lighting the tip of the lightsaber there, making it nice and bright, but also providing that green glow onto Grievous's body uh, from the lightsaber itself. I've still got my key light over here which is diffuse and that's giving us the white light on the other side of Grievous's face. Um, the other thing that I have is a second white lighting arm S coming in here. With the green lighting arm on its own shining on the lightsaber, it's not quite bright enough. Uh, at least it sort of matches the brightness of his face. And of course the lightsaber should be much, much brighter. So I've got two lighting arms focused solely on the tip of that lightsaber, making it nice and bright. I then still have my background with my red lighting arm coming in, uh, slightly repositioned so that it, it transitions from uh, red down in the right hand side of the screen up to uh, the top left where it's dark. So four lighting arms going at once to create one uh, mashup of lights on General Grievous here and we're going to do a similar thing with Obi-Wan Kenobi with his blue lightsaber and I'm going to put uh, blue in the background of his uh, portrait. Um, that blue and red combo is something that you see quite a lot in the movies. They use it to um, denote the good guys from the bad guys. You'll see it in a lot of the scenes where things are turning bad. Uh, things will go from nice light blues and suddenly become darker and redder when the bad things are happening, when the baddies are on the screen. So I wanted to recreate that and I'm going to do so by uh, changing some of these lighting arms around, swapping the red for blue, the green for blue as well because Obi-Wan has a blue lightsaber here, uh, and then I'm going to uh, maybe chop these two scenes into one another. So something particularly tricky with Obi-Wan and his lightsaber here is that these lightsaber pieces, uh, they're actually completely transparent. Uh, so they have the color to them, but you can actually see through them, which means lighting them is really tricky. You can't, uh, you can't shine a light on them because the light passes straight through and it still looks dark. Um, so what I've done here is actually light the background so that the light shines through from the background onto our lightsaber. Now, I'm not totally happy with it because it still has uh, a strange black outline to it, um, but I think this is as good as we're going to get with uh, the lightsaber itself. I'm pretty happy with the shot overall though, we've still got that nice blue um, uh, glow from the lightsaber on his face as opposed to the green from Grievous's lightsaber and then we've got uh, the blue in the background as well. I think together these two shots are going to make a really cool little scene. So we're back to shooting baddies again. I've got Darth Maul out now and uh, I wanted to um, try a different technique to get the lightsabers looking right. Um, so the last ones were okay, but not quite perfect. This one, I want to try the same technique that we used to light the street lamps in uh, the last Lego shoot that I did. And that's using lasers to uh, to light the, the translucent bricks that are the, uh, the blade of the lightsaber and uh, the light bulbs in the street lamps. 
Um, I did have a go at that and it works pretty well, uh, but for the same problem that those lightsabers are completely translucent, there's not a lot of, uh, of things inside there for the light to refract around on and then make it look like the lightsabers are glowing the way that a lightsaber should. Um, so I took a couple of shots like that, but then I realized that uh, with, this, um, with this spray and the laser, uh, I can actually use the laser beam itself to form the blade of the lightsaber. So what I've done is I've turned out all of the lights, I've turned down my uh, my main key light down to just uh, I think one or two percent there so that it's really really dim and I've positioned my laser which uh, you can uh, if I can find it yet yeah, you can see there that we've got a laser. Um, it's pointed exactly down the end of the uh, the lightsaber, which uh, I've taken taken the blade out of uh, Darth Maul's lightsaber there, um, and just positioning him so that uh, the blade of the lightsaber is in the same position as uh, this laser is actually pointing. Then I'm going to do a really long exposure. Uh, using my uh, my spray, I'm going to just spray so that you can see the laser beam in the darkness and shoot for maybe uh, one or two second exposure. That's going to pick out that red uh, laser beam and just get enough light from that one or two percent from the key light to light our image. I think it's going to look really cool, so I'm going to take that shot and I'll show you in just a sec because I can't show you on the camera right now. Uh, it's too dark. So for my last shot today, I wanted to do something a little bit different, move away from the heroes and villains and just onto the generic guys, the, the, the stormtroopers and an imperial officer as well. So I've got three little guys here, a uh, couple of different types of stormtrooper, probably not very realistic, you don't really find multiple types hanging around together, um, but these are the models that I've got, so this is what I'm going to work with. Um, I've got a couple of these guys and an imperial officer marching towards the camera, and I wanted them to be shooting their lasers, their blaster rifles towards the camera as well. So to do that I've moved my lighting from the mini tripod and mounted it on the camera hot shoe just using uh, the basic hot shoe adapter that comes with the kit. Uh, and what that's going to do is allow me to shoot two lasers, so I've got two laser lighting arms here, one of which is a prototype, which is why it looks a little bit different, um, but they are shooting right into the ends of their blaster rifles. I've also still got my little key light down here, uh, which is still just on just a few percent, uh, because I'm going to do another long exposure to capture those, uh, those lasers as I, oh, and there you go, there's an example of why you don't blast this stuff straight at your, uh, at your models, but you can actually see that uh, the the lasers are showing up really, really well when we uh, when we use our aerosol, and that's going to uh, make it look really, really cool as those lasers come towards the camera. I'm going to take the shot and I'll show you it in just a sec. This stuff is really cool, I've really enjoyed using it for shooting these lasers and getting really atmospheric shots, uh, similar to how you see in the movies, getting a little bit of haze there in the background of our shots and even the foreground as well, just to make it a little bit more cinematic. Um, you do need to make sure that you wipe everything down after you've used this stuff though, because there is a lot of residue left over on the models, on the shooting surface, even on the lens of your camera. It just takes a little wipe to uh, get rid of it, uh, but if you don't notice that it's there it might ruin some images for you later on even my glasses are a little bit hazed up do make sure to open a window when you're using this stuff as well because uh, if you're if you have uh, fire alarm smoke detectors in your home um, everything does get a little bit hazy a little bit smoky um, this room I'm not sure if you can tell on this camera but it is a little bit smokier than when I started I'm gonna put links down in the description to uh, to check out this stuff uh, like I said it's really cheap it's made for photographers and even if you're not doing miniatures and toy photography like I am it's really cool to uh, check out for portraitures and weddings and things like like that. I'm really happy with the shots that I got today. Uh, I was inspired by all of the, uh, the Star Wars hype that's going on at the minute, um, but I'm quite pleased with the shots that I got of my old minifigures here. Uh, maybe I'll get some from uh, the, new, the new trilogy at some point and try those out, uh, but for now I'm pretty exhausted on the nerd stuff. Hopefully it's not been too tedious for uh, the non-nerds at home and you still got some really interesting uh, photography techniques, tips, ideas and inspiration 
inspiration from this video. If you'd like more of all of that stuff, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button. Um, I'd like to know what you think to today's shoot down in the comments, um, because I do plan on doing a lot more toy photography, Lego photography, uh, and shooting some more of the stuff that uh, I've got up on my shelves at some point. So if you really liked today's video and like to see some more, let me know. For now though guys, thank you very much for watching and may the force be with you.